Scope 3, carbon reporting. Uh, let's look at what is Scope 3. Do you need to include them for uh, legal reporting purposes, such as in ESOS and SECR in the UK? And number three, do you need to include them in your carbon footprint? So, scope three. The greenhouse gas protocol splits all emissions into three categories. Broadly speaking, group one, group two, and group three, known as scope one, scope two, scope three. Scope one here, simplified, I mean, there's a, there's a more formal definition of this, but this is how I sort of explain it to my clients, is generally gas and company car fuel. And if you've got other vehicles, it will be, you know, diesel fuel that you put in lorries or uh, one of my clients has got a, a jet. So it would be their jet for fuel that they use, but basically fuel. Okay, you burn it, it gives off CO2 nice and easy. Scope two, even easier for me, simplify it down as electricity. Hope you can read my writing. So any electricity goes into scope two. Scope three is broadly everything else. And whereas you could define these two as <laughs> question mark on electricity is not quite direct, but you can define those as direct. This one here, scope three, is indirect. Okay, so it's indirect emissions, scope three. That's what scope three carbon is. Examples of, of carbon that you, you generate, uh, your cause to be generated indirectly, will be things like purchase goods and services. So, for example, if you bought a laptop, then someone's going to make that laptop and that's going to emit carbon, but you're causing that to be emitted. So you're not emitting that carbon it cause, uh, that, that, that goes into the manufacture of the laptop, but you are actually causing it to, to happen, so therefore you're responsible for it under that scope. Another good one for scope three would be, uh, for example, um, commuting. So, you know, whilst you as a company do not emit um, carbon when someone drives to and from work, you do ask them to drive to and from work or at least get to and from work. And that emissions that they have in that, in that um, sort of journey are scope three emissions. So it's everything else indirect. It's split into 15 different subcategories. So here, um, of which the first biggest category by a long shot, in my experience anyway, but uh, you know, uh, your mileage may vary. The, the first big one there is purchased goods and services, where the purchased goods and services, also known as supply chain carbon, that's the big one. So that's where, uh, in my experience, you get a huge amount of carbon that is emitted. And if you're including a, a, a scope three in your carbon footprint, which I'll come on to in a second, then this can sometimes be 80 to 90% of your carbon emissions. Okay, so it's large and <laughs> it's large and important. Okay, and scope three emissions generally are more complex to work out than the scope one and two. The data is less precise, so there's often data issues, getting hold of the data and the quality of the data, and uh, it normally dwarfs scope one and scope two. So, number two, do you need to include it in SECR and ESOS reporting in the UK and um, you know other frameworks? Um, I'm qualified in SECR and ESOS, but I'm sure the other frameworks follow the same basic rule that currently you do not need to report scope three emissions in ESOS and SECR, but that is under review. So the ESOS review going on at the moment in the UK is um, uh, I'd say it's 99% chance that as of 2022 and onwards, you will have to include the scope three emissions and SECR, same deal. That is being reviewed and they have said that they are looking at scope three um, emissions to be included in the SECR report. What level? I don't know. That's up to the government to decide. They'll write it down and, and put in maybe just the big ones such as, you know, air travel and things like that, hotel stays um, and, you know, maybe raw materials, that sort of thing. Okay, number three, uh, should you include it in your carbon footprint? 
You know, the answer is most definitely yes. You know, if, if you've got the majority of your carbon is being generated in scope three, you can't not put it in. It's just too large. It's, uh, if you said your carbon footprint is only the carbon emitted because of scope one and scope two, you're missing the big picture. So carbon footprints should include scope three. Um, which of the 15 categories you choose to include or exclude in carbon footprint will vary depending on where you draw your uh, draw your scope for your project, but they absolutely should be emitted, uh, should be included. They are large, they are important. I hope you found that useful. If you want any more information on how you calculate scope three emissions, it's not easy. You'll need a software tool. We've got one, it's called Plato. There's more information about it uh, in the links below. Um, and if you want more information about, you know, the methodologies that you use on scope three, have a look at the other videos uh, that we're pushing out in the last end of 2021 and into 2022. All right, thanks a bunch, bye-bye.